So I just I just bought a new trailer and never in my life have I felt more unprepared or dumber than having bought this. It's a great trailer. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Um but I bought a I bought too much. It's 48 feet. And I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never driven like a big truck or a semi or anything. So then I pull into the little diesel pumps here. I don't even know how to get fuel. So I had to send the old man inside and the nice lady turns it on like I'm super trucking or something. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. This is so close. I could barely get in here on that little incline. So I think we tried to move this up, but I don't know how to move it up. I don't know, this is absolutely terrifying. I do not have enough truck. I have one rear wheel, I put airbags in it. I don't know, this is this is too much for me to process right now. Dad's riding with me, and I can already tell that he's regretting coming with. Because he doesn't know if we're gonna make it home alive at this point. I don't know, I'm just gonna put some air in the tires and the bags and just hope for the best at this point. I just need to get out of town and get on the highway. I'm like, I'm like a guy that just bought his first bass boat, trying to pull her down the road. I, I'm just so unqualified. Did make it home, I made it home the other night. I didn't hit anything. I stayed on the highway, I kept the wheels on the ground. It really wasn't that big a deal once he got rolling. So here, here she is, a little upgrade. The trailer market right now is so goofed up. I sold a 22 foot trailer for double what I paid for it and then bought this. It was only like a $2,500 difference to go from our old rig to this rig. Now granted, this rig's like 20 years older than my old trailer, but it's got the things we need. Um, the biggest thing we wanted was living quarter. My kids are getting older and they want to come with now. So we kind of wanted somewhere where they could stay and we wanted a bigger trailer so we could carry more equipment with us. So this has an eight foot living quarter in it. It's eight foot floor space and then you get the up top obviously for the beds. So it's nothing huge, it's nothing bougie, but it'll definitely do the job for us. It's got AC, heat, microwave, TV. I mean, basically the essentials. This flips down. It's not a bad deal. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a bathroom package would be like the one thing it's missing. But it kind of works out because we needed the shorter we need the shorter living quarter so we could have a larger garage if you're wondering how there was such a minimal difference in price it's because it hit tree at one point so we got the uh, pine tree discount on her in the garage the garage is 32 feet so she is uh she's a unit as far as floor space goes so we we actually bought this from mike with the mutt um up in northern minnesota and he said he could get his truck, which isn't the smallest thing in the world, it's an old 50s Ford. He could get his truck on here with the smart car behind it. So that's quite a bit of room. I think realistically, like you could have the smart car, the Camaro, and if you took out that front, if you took that front counter out, I think you could even get a golf cart in here. I don't know why I would need that many vehicles with me at a racetrack, but it's a possibility. Other nice part with the trailers under here, it's got a 5,500 Owen generator. So we can run welders and the AC units and blah, 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 blah. It's basically, it's just kind of, it's self-contained, which is a nice deal. But yeah, so there, there she be. Uh, just me and my old, uh, my old single axle 2500 on the way home. It actually did way better than I thought. I got nine and a half miles of the gallon at 70. I can't complain. But the best part about this monstrosity is it came with something else. Something I never knew I needed, a smart car. And now that I have one, I don't know how I live without it. It's basically a golf cart. I think it's actually shorter than my golf cart. It's a golf cart with AC, heat, and a radio. I don't know what more you need in life. So if you're looking for me at the racetrack, look for the silver smart car. It's not yipping about the trailer. Let's get back to the Camaro. The last piece we were missing was the rear shocks. They're at Viscous Performance in Texas. Um, I sent them down there like four weeks ago. They told me four weeks, and guess what? They showed up exactly four weeks later. Nothing makes me happier than an accurate lead time. <laughs> look at these Woo -wee. these do not look like the same shocks we sent out just to confirm yep made by pony yep these these are the shocks i sent them uh there's not there, there ain't much left of what we started with so I'm, I'm not a shock expert what i know what i think i know is they reuse the body and that's about it so it's got new bearings top and bottom, got a new spring on it, it's got a new rod end on it, and then they converted, so this is like a Santa rod, and now it's a clicker, instead of on the old Coney's, it had the sweep adjustment, you had to get in that like, screwdriver, total pain to work on. And honestly, they never worked before, so now they work, they click, 
Yep, they definitely click. Uh, no, these things are sweet. They look brand new, and it was cheaper than buying like a new set of sand tops. It comes with paperwork. It comes with stickers. It comes with a dyno sheet. I don't. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it does. Looks cool. I think if you just spend enough money on shocks, you get one of these. I don't know. Hopefully they're set up correctly because I don't know what to do with them. So there was really no scenario that I need a push car, um, you know, because I have like, you know, cooling system and a vehicle that's self-contained and doesn't overheat or, you know, weird stuff like that. So anyhow, I don't need a push car. Uh, so now the smart car has just turned itself into the parts runner, uh, which it's very good at that. So right now I'm just bringing the, uh, right, it's right, it's right there. It's like four inches behind me. I'm just running down the old, uh, the old four link bar to Brian real quick here so he can make another one and hope they don't goof that one up too. So here's a fun fact about smart cars. They're paddle shifted if you want them to be. Oh God, I just pulled out in front of somebody. Oh yeah. Oh, grab gear. Oh, there's two. You just, you, whoa, bam, there's three. Oh yeah, we're ripping. Here comes four. Oh yeah. We got one more to go. She's a five speed. There's five. Just humming along at 60 miles an hour. All right, so we dropped that bar off of Brian's. He's, he was nice enough to agree to build me one more bar, but I'm not supposed to screw it up again. The car, is fully on its weight for the first time since it hit the wall. The wishbone is in, it's adjusted. The shocks are in, they're adjusted. The front end is completely in, that's all set up. This thing, we are so close, we are so close. I'm gonna run to the store in the smart car, of course. I'm gonna pick up some oil, we're gonna fill this up, we're gonna top off the tranny, and we, we are gonna fire this thing today. All right, so we got the shocks in. We got the suspension pretty set, it's like close. Um, I still got to scale it, put me in the car, make final adjustments, but it's in the ballpark now. I think, I think we're all ready to do some stuff. I'm going to fill it up with engine oil. Um, once I get run, I'll pop off training fluid. But otherwise, I think, I think we're about ready to fire this thing. I hope it works out. Um, as far as running, not a whole lot changed. Relocated some coils, stuff like that. So you probably noticed when you're watching the video that the radials are gone. Um, I knew I wasn't ready to make that swap in life. Uh, every time I walked in the garage and looked at the car, it looked like a Pro Street 1995 Steamroller Edition. I just gonna handle it, okay? I, I didn't like it, they are ugly. And I'm a child, so I put the 20s back on. There's actually a little bit more reasoning to it. The upper shock mount, where it is, is dead center over the rear end. Those tires are so tall, I need to drop the body down further on the chassis to make them sit right. Um, otherwise, it just I can, I can hardly tuck them. They don't fit. The chassis won't come down low enough. So that upper shock mount bar actually needs to get cut and moved to the back side of the rear end instead of directly above it. And that can bring the tire down a little bit further. But the other issue is my wheels. They have so much. They have so little back space for the 2810.5. They stick out too far. So even if even if the upper shock mount wasn't an issue, the wheels are still an issue with that size tire. So I have my old Lumistars that have two inches more back space than these ones do. So I'm going to put the radials on those with high pack, and those are a 13 inch wheel instead of a 14 inch wheel that I have now. So I'm not too worried about having doubles with that wheel. So I'm going to mount those up. We'll try it again, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to move that shock bar before I can run the radials. So. As of right now, we're back in the 2810.5, same thing we had before. The bars are set to the same location I had before. Um, I just got to dial in like the pinion um, and a couple other little things as far as adjustments go to make some settings on the front of the car. I didn't give you the courtesy because in every video you have to watch me crank and crank and crank to get this thing to fire the first time because we got the belt drive fuel pump. So I went ahead and wung it over a whole bunch without the ignition on. She's primed and ready to rip and I think this thing's going to pop immediately. So I got, I got that good, good tune-up in it from Steven.
Either way, it's alive. It is alive, it's back, it hit a wall, we fixed it, and we're back. And I could not be more excited. I spent my entire life savings twice over, but that's fine because it's back in the flesh. Stand by for me, probably trying to hit another wall or flipping it over or doing huge wheelie. I don't care. It's going to be sick.